if I needed to add an additional information here, let's see if I forget to include the type parameter. PowerShell will actually ask me, what is the type of this one in this case? Um, so then I know I have to go back and then add that uh, parameter uh, or argument. So if I go into my CM console now and go into my hierarchy and into my boundaries, I can see that I now have a new object in here. I hope you trust the fact that I just created it, especially if, if you're working like with that. a lot of other things, you can just do import module, uh, Azure AD, and then you have a, a module that you can uh, import in that way. But SCCM or Config Manager is slightly more fiddly in that area because the way they built this integration is they created what's called a PowerShell drive or uh, a sort of virtual drive to put on top so of that. Configuration Manager. And you can see that it actually outputs the uh, the objects that it's creating here. There's a way to get around that if you if you don't want that information. So if we go in here, press F5 to refresh, we now have our new submits. And you can do the same for IP ranges, you can do, the, do it for, for 80 sites or whatever you need to create, what type okay. of boundary you need to create. Unexpected file extension specified. Hmm. That is because when you specify the content for an MSI deployment type, it needs to point to the MSI file and not the folder. If it's a script deployment type, then you need to specify the folder. So if you are using, for instance, PowerShell application deployment toolkit to create your packages, you would specify the folder. But if you've only done scripting, then you might not know what debugging actually is. Debugging is the process of stepping through your code, intercepting what happens as you go along, working out why something doing what it's doing, because you can go in and look at the variables as you this step This one is code. not interesting because of its properties. This is interesting because of its methods. Because now we have methods and methods are just like you see with, with PowerShell objects. We do have method, uh, methods in there also sometimes. Methods are actions. So if you want to do a repair of the client, that's when you would call the method call repair client. So you could even do a reset. Go over to this client and then look in my temp folder. There's a message here. And that is actually the message that I remoted directly into you. So I'm working on this device instead. And I can do whatever I want. I can run scripts if that's allowed locally, like we talked about <laughs> in the previous modules that you need to have permission to do that. Uh, and of course, uh, there is a lot of things that you can- These parameters are sent to the script. And the script, actually what it does is it goes in and it says, okay, is there a WIM file in that stuff that you pointed to, the folder that you pointed to, that you downloaded? Is there a WIM file in there? If, in, and if that's the case, then I'll mount that because that's where my drivers are. If, if there isn't a WIM file in there, I'll just return the, the path because that's the path where you so want to get your driver. The graph API is basically the way to communicate with Intune um, using PowerShell or any other language because there's a lot of other languages. So if you want to do C Sharp or if you want to do Python and, and stuff like that, you can find samples that will allow you to do that. But but PowerShell is, is the preferred management tool from, from Microsoft for this. So, so you definitely find a lot of tools uh, or a lot of descriptions uh, showing how to do this. You actually see that it starts throwing things in here. And here you have the actual REST point, uh, uh, REST API endpoint that it's calling. So this is the actual information being pulled from the REST API. And this is, the translated version of it uh, that you can call using the PowerShell so if, we, if we go to an application, you should see that that would be named like that. So if we go in here, and you can see now we have application latest um, and we have the properties and here you have, again, you can see it's now application and then an ID. 
The scope uh, is the same. And this is actually the version or the revision of your application. So this is the unique key. This will get you to that specific. If I do verbose, see what happens here. I get a lot of extra information in Cyan. Cyan is always verbose. So you should not use that if you do write host. Use something else, use green, use yellow, use red, not sign because sign is verbose and people would expect that to be verbose. So you can see here that this is all output from the SCCM modules. Importing command, let's yada, 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 do a lot of stuff. And then we come all the way down here. And so here we are actually doing something. Here we are actually getting members from a specific collection. 